This video is about sonnet, its definition, origin, the type of sonnets, its structure, along with the examples. Now let's see what a sonnet is. It's a 14 line poem written in iambic pentameter with a fixed rhyme scheme. I'll give a brief idea of iambic pentameter after discussing a few more points on sonnet. The term sonnet comes from the Italian word sonetto, which means little song. Invented by Giacomo da Lentini, originated in Italy around 13th century, perfected by Petrarch in 14th century, brought to England in 16th century by Thomas Wyatt and Henry Howard. Writers of sonnets are called sonnetiers. Here are some confusing facts about sonnet that is invented by Giacomo da Lentini, perfected by Petra, and brought to England by Thomas White and Henry Howard. But here comes the types of sonnets. They vary in rhyme scheme and structure. First one, Shakespearean or Elizabethan sonnet. Second, Spenserian sonnet. And third, Petrarchan or Italian sonnet. In among these sonnets, Shakespearean and Petrarchan sonnets are more popular. Shakespearean sonnet or Elizabethan sonnet has four sections, three quatrains and a couplet. A quatrain is a four-line stanza and a couplet is a two rhymed lines. And the rhyme scheme is for the quatrains it is A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, S and couplet G, G. So this is the outline of uh, Shakespearean sonnet's structure. Here's an example of Shakespearean sonnet, Shall I Compare Thee to a Summer's Day? And uh, this is Shakespeare's sonnet 18. Now let's take a closer look at uh, the structure of Shakespearean sonnet. That is, as I've already said, a quatrain is a four-line stanza. And here you can see the first three quatrains contain four lines each. That is the first quatrain, one to four lines, second quatrain, five to eight, and third quatrain, nine to twelve lines. So altogether there are three quatrains, and the twelve lines are arranged in three quatrains, and, uh, and the concluding two lines, that is a couplet, that is the two successive lines that rhyme, that is a couplet. Uh, now let's take a look at the rhyme scheme of um, the Shakespearean sonnet, that is alternating rhyme scheme can be seen, that is A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D and E, F, E, F. That is uh, in the quatrains and the couplet rhyme scheme is G, G. So that's about the structure of Shakespearean sonnet. That is three quatrains and a couplet with rhyme scheme A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F and G, G. Now another point is that in the three quatrains, the poet establishes a theme or a problem and then he resolves it in the final two lines. So that's all about the structure of the Shakespearean sonnet. Now what is an iambic pentameter? Now it is a metric line that is used in traditional English poetry and uh, it's a meter that Shakespeare nearly always used when writing in words. Now let's see what an iambus is. It's a foot or a beat consisting of an unstressed syllable followed by a stressed syllable. Now I'll make it clear. Now here is an example of Shakespeare's uh, sonnet, uh, the first line of Shakespeare's sonnet, Shall I Compare Thee to a Summer's Day? And this line is divided into uh, 10 syllables. Now you can see in uh, each line of sonnet is a group of 10 syllables. Now here, Shall I Compare Thee to a Summer's Day? So these are 10 syllables and this line is again divided into five iams and each iam consists of an unstressed syllable followed by a stressed syllable. So here you can see the first iam that is shall I unstressed stressed compare unstressed stress they to unstressed stress again a sum and it continues uh, some verse day. So that, that is the way it is arranged. Five iams with an unstressed syllable followed by a stressed syllable. So since it is 5, it is called pentameter. That is why it is called iambic pentameter. 
and to know more about syllables and uh, the uh, unstressed and stressed syllables, I will make a video about it to make it clear. So that's all about IMB pentameter. A few points to remember on Shakespearean sonnets. Published by Thomas Thorpe in the year 1609. Genre, Renaissance poetry. Language, early modern English. Theme, love, beauty, mortality. 1609 publication of Shakespeare's sonnets is referred to as Quarto. A number of sonnets written by Shakespeare, 154. Sonnets 1 to 126, addressed to a young man. He could be Henry Wrightesley, um, Earl of Southampton, and William Herbert, Earl of Pembroke. Sonnets 126 to 152, addressed to a dark lady named Mary Fitton. Sonnets 78 to 86, concern a rival poet who makes his first appearance in Sonnet 21. Sonnets 138 and 144 published in 1599 in the poetry collection The Passionate Pilgrim. Sonnet 145 written in Iambic Tetrameter. Those lips that love's own hand did make. Sonnet 99 has 15 lines. Sonnet 126 with 12 lines. Shakespeare mocks the track and style in Sonnet 130. And the first 17 sonnets are called procreation sonnets because they encourage the young man they address to marry and father children. Hence, procreate. Now, the Petrarchan sonnet, how the lines are arranged. There are two sections. That is octave and sestet. Octave means eight line stanza and sestet is six line stanza. That is altogether 14 lines and the rhyme scheme is A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A, C, D, E, C, D, E or C, D, C, D, C, D. So, A, B, B, A is an octave that is, uh, you know, uh, fixed and the sestet is flexible. It varies in a Petrarchan sonnet. Here is Petrarchan sonnet. Now, let's see the example of Milton's on his blindness. So, when I consider how my light is spent is one of the best known of the sonnets of John Milton. And uh, here the 14 lines are divided into two sections of octave and sestet. And as you all know, octave is a group of eight lines and sestet is a group of six lines. And now look at the rhyme scheme of octave, A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A, which is fixed. And here the sestet rhyme scheme is C, D, C, C, D, C, which is flexible. That means it varies. And uh, as a um, as we have discussed in the Shakespearean sonnet here also, the first, that is the, in the octave, the poet proposes a question, a problem or an issue, and the poet makes an attempt to resolve the issue in the sestet. So that's all about the structure of Petrarchan sonnet. Examples of Petrarchan sonnets. John Milton's When I Consider How My Light Is Spent. Elizabeth Barrett Browning's How Do I Love Thee, William Wordsworth's Composed Upon Westminster Bridge. Now, here is Spencerian sonnet and it is developed by Edmund Spencer in a warranty. There are four sections like Shakespearean sonnet and that is three quatrains and a couplet. And here the quatrains are interlocked quatrains. So you'll get an idea about it when you, uh, when you see the Example of Spencerian sonnet that is three quatrains, that is a quatrain means a four line stanza and two rhymed lines, that is couplet. And the rhyme scheme of Spencerian sonnet is A B A B B C B C C D C D E E. That is here you can see the rhyme scheme A B A B. Again, the B is um, you know carried over from the first quatrain to the next B C B C. Again, the uh, C is carried over to the next quatrain. C, D, C, D. So that is why it is called interlocked quatrains. Now here we have an example of Spenserian sonnet. Now look at the structure of uh, Spenserian sonnet. Here is an example of uh, Spenser's Immorality 68, Most Glorious Lord of Life. Now just like uh, Shakespearean sonnet, it is also divided into three quatrains and a couplet. And the rhyme scheme is uh, A, B, A, B, B, C, B, C, C, D, C, D. 
PE. Here the rhyme scheme uh, or the quatrains rhyme scheme uh, is linked or the, you can also call as linked quatrains or interconnected quatrain because the first quatrain rhyme that is B is carried over to the next quatrain and again the second quatrain's rhyme C is carried over to the third quatrain. So that is why it's called linked quatrain and the couplet is similar to that of Shakespearean uh, couplet. That's all about uh, the structure of Spencer's sonnet.